like emo sexy like 2009 look yeah but you need like a little bit more bangs yeah i do need more bangs but i'm not getting bangs when i get my hair cut tomorrow you're not going through, as people like to say, like you're having a nervous breakdown, so you get bangs. Man, I, I am getting my hair cut. I feel very insulted <laughs> as a, ba- a lifelong bangs wearer. <laughs> what are you saying? I, man, have you ever? I remember uh, after like my big breakup when we, I went to go get my hair cut, and I because I always do. If I'm really upset, I go get my hair cut. I am the meme. That you're not supposed to be. <laughs> and I went to go get my haircut and I spent like $30 at Astor Place, that, you know, oh, that, yeah. like underground place in New York. And it was during a U.S. Cup final and the dude was watching soccer <laughs> while he was cutting my hair and he was like screaming at the TV and he fucked up my hair so much. Oh he cut off so much more of my hair than I had asked to be cut off. And I cried, I think, for two weeks straight. Oh my god. But, but you cried long enough the hair grew. The hair grew a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and then it was better. And then it, yeah, then it was better. And I was like, my hair. I felt like I was in Little Women. Oh. Except I didn't get paid to sell my hair. No, you didn't get it. It got <laughs> taken from me. It got taken from me. And, but you I know, am getting my hair cut tomorrow. Yes. You could have had. You should have started collecting wigs then. So oh. just for this. It could have oh. been your wig era. <laughs> it could have been. I mean, I know I'm definitely going to go through that era of my life. I think you should. And I'm excited about it. Henry's already told me he, when he gets older, he is going to, he's going to be a pioneer for men who wear just different fashion wigs. Yeah, get crazy wigs. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think he's a pioneer. I'm pretty sure lots of people already done that. Yeah, I think people do that, but I think for him, it's not, you know, in the same way where Henry and I are both pioneers of savory pudding, even though some people may have had savory pudding before. I mean, But but you've never had it like this. No, no, they haven't. And I'll I'll Check out Good Pud every other Thursday. Is it every other Thursday? I think so. Really? You guys are eating how much pudding? Savory pudding. The pud tie was too far. There was a lot Ugh. of uncooked fish sauce in it. Did you smell it? No, I didn't oh get anywhere near it. Yeah, they did eat pudding that was pad thai flavored, pud and they thai. were calling it pud thai. So. And there was dehydrated yeah. shrimp in it, I, and it got stuck in my teeth. Ugh. Get and out I was of here. flossing later on that night, and I was just like, oh, my God, there's shrimp stuck Ew, in my stop teeth. it. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I We just did two burger shows. I've been drinking for days. Well, that's why we're, I, we're, we're very, hung over Nesta today. We're very lucky that our, our characters can be um, a bit bedraggled yes. because we may also – Murder Fizz 20-year reunion was not – a, like relaxing, but it was no. very, very, very fun. It you was guys great. were so good. We are not. Um, it wasn't. It's not twenty years ago anymore. Turns no. out. Um, and Murder it Fist hurts is a lot more. Murder Fist is the uh, Jackie and my husband and a bunch of other people's sketch comedy group that yes just had a reunion. We had a twentieth anniversary reunion, and it was. It really makes you remember that getting older, all of us have acid problems, and we literally oh my God. up at the bar. We had a big bottle of Tums so that you could take. I literally took two Tums, and then I took a tequila shot, and then I ate two more Tums. <laughs> and I'm like, now that's how you live life. That's what you call a mature ladies chaser. <laughs> And everyone's like, how did you not lose your voice, Jackie? And I was like, because I drank like 250 ounces of water. I was trying so desperately to not lose my voice because everyone else sounded like trash yesterday. Oh, yeah. Eddie yesterday was going. You guys are going to hear him all week on all the shows. Yeah, all of Eddie's Eddie's voice is just ripped to shreds. (laughs) But he, it was worth it because it was so funny. You guys, sorry. I didn't mean to start us off. It's because I'm drunk Nesta. That's why. Let's get back out of the shrimp talk, okay? Oh, is that like the dick? TikTok, TikTok, but with for shrimp. shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> what do they like? It's like crustacean news. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like different little hats that they wear, like going out shrimp style. And Aww. it's just like they're wearing oh, little no, like. Now you're going back to round table. <laughs> the jumbo shrimp. Okay, you're guys, we're making a lot game. of references that probably a lot of you don't know because you're here for a guitar and you're like, what are these what are you insane talking about? women we're drunk talking Nesta about? We're Nesta right now. We're drunk Nestas. 
Nesta's both drunk. And yes, we uh, are wearing two different color okay. wigs. Natalie showed up and I was like, I'm sorry, Natalie, I couldn't find my light brown wig. Well, there's, you know, there's slight debates on exactly what tone their hair is. And so we maybe are neither correct. But yeah. we're somewhere in the middle. But we're making a choice. Probably it's somewhere in the middle between our two yeah. hair choices I think today. So. Yeah. Um, so are you ready? Are you ready to strap in for 80 chapters of sweaty, strap tense in. drama? Strap on. Get lit. Um, so we do it. I guess we do encourage, you know, if you, as long as you're not driving or like taking care of children, you know, have a glass of wine while you listen to this episode. Yeah, don't, us, not if you're driving. Yeah, if you're driving, don't leave the road sodas at home. Man, a friend of ours, we were leaving the studio the other day and she was walking out and we're all so used to drinking sparkling water in a can that she went to walk out and she had a Coors Light in her hand. And I was like, <laughs> yo, you bring in a road soda? She's like, oh my God. I, oh my God. And it's like, yeah, dude. Put the road soda down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we can't do that anymore. That's... <laughs> she wasn't driving. She was with her husband. It was of a was bygone, sober. bygone era. Um, so when we uh, creak open this thick, oh my god, it's thick, thick. sensual, sinewy book. We're at my favorite book, by the way. This one is <gasps> my favorite. Um, my favorite too. So I'm really excited to delve into this world. Um, so when I look at the front here, we see it's the most detailed map so far. I actually pulled all of the maps up for Jackie Whoa, and me to look at. Oh, all and the there's maps. And each, each uh, book has slightly more detail on the maps, but then... I'm we straight get, up. I didn't notice this. You always look at the maps. You're very good at that. I'm very bad at looking at the maps. I like to... I play adventure games in my spare time, so this is what I enjoy doing. Like, I like looking at lands. <laughs> I fun. understand. She loves looking at lands. I've always said that about Natalie. Uh, Natalie, this bitch, don't even bring her in front of a globe. She won't talk to you for hours. But hey, good way to keep me occupied. If yes. Needs me. It's good to know, yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. Ever, ever upset, just I, yeah. I swear, I gotta get you a globe. Spin it. I'm You're like, getting one whoa. for Christmas. <laughs> good, good, and good. And there'll good. be booze inside of it. Whoa, cool. That's my favorite. Yeah, we love booze. So we get essentially this map that's behind us. She's pointing at the map. Yeah, I am. Without my pointer. I can't see it without the pointer. I'm sorry. Let me see. Do I have it? Oh, thank God. Thank God. Okay. We have ah, this map ah, at ah, the front ah, of the fifth book. I can see it, but I'm scared. It's a beautiful, um, what, do you, what is that called? Menagerie. No, there's like a top, top mm, map. Art. Antarctica. Map art. The North Pole. Is this helping? Yes. Am cartography. I... Oh, cartography is the word. I didn't quite understand the word you were asking for. I don't know if you could tell. You help, you're super helpful. Antarctica. <laughs> Antarctica. It's difficult to say. It's that, it's that, seven, it's that second C. That'll get you. Antarctica. Antarctica. Um, yes, so it is a beautiful cartography -ish. feet feet. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> are you are we at drunk? Feet? I feel <laughs> it's been a, it's been a weekend. Um, <laughs> one for the books. Um, it is a much more detailed map than the other books, which I didn't realize how much more. Like every time they like sprinkle, they do a little sprink on top of what you get to know for each book. But then the fifth one is like a boom. Yeah. It's really pretty. Bam. Um, so we're getting, of course, we've already talked about this in a court of silver flames. We're getting a third person limited POV that's no longer Feyre. <gasps> we see Feyre from afar, and it makes me a little sad. I'm just like, I can't see in there anymore. What? Yeah. Oh, you... Uh, Feyre afar. Ah, uh, yes, okay. A Feyre. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Really, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, yeah, we see her from... She's Obviously, it's, this is about Nesta and Cassian's story, and so we see Feyre. She's she there, but... Drinking. She ain't drinking. No, Feyre's she, not drinking. Oh, what? Who, what no. No. Don't bring we're not there yet. No, we're not there yet. Um Nesta, however, at the top is very much drinking. Yeah. Um I um I will say, and I know that we've talked about this before, that um, you know, this is definitely uh Sarah has come out and said that like, you know, talking about struggling with mental illness and like reading this book, like I didn't identify with any of the characters until Nesta in this book, where I was like, Oh girl. 
I've been there. Oh, man, yeah. trying to drink away the problems, pretending that they don't exist. And turns out that doesn't help. And you also have a deep magical well of uh, talking about my pussy. fire <laughs> inside of your body. <laughs> yeah, I'm made of fire. I mean, I am a fire sign, Leo. Me bitches. too. I'm also a fire sign. And we get along so well, which is like you'd think that wouldn't be the case. Yeah. Um, but together we're two flames, and we make oh, a tornado of fire. I don't know what what is a big fire cult. A fire. Daddy fire? <laughs> you just call <it> fire. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I do, I, I, uh, I like the way the story is formatted because we have already seen some third person stuff in the prior books. Mm-hmm. Um, sprinked it in. She sprinked it she in. She did sprink it in. And this is essentially the way that this story is formatted. It is essentially a, a subtle shifting of perspective between Nesta and Cassian, both in third person limited. And there's probably a name for this form of writing that I don't know, but I really enjoyed it compared to say how A Court of Frost and Starlight is structured in like say the Game of Thrones books. Like I enjoy those books, but it is very much like this chapter and then it's this person's chapter. Right. And there's very distinct, like, okay, now we're in here. Tonal and, shifts. Yeah. And in this, you are you are kind of just weaving in and out, and you kind of have to use context clues to realize whose mind you're in in that moment, which I think is cool. Um, it's really beautifully done, in my opinion. It's sort of like, um, it reminds me of, it's very fluid, the way that she does it. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, as an unhinged person, I've, I've tabbed each change of POV, and this is what it looks like. The top Oh here. my god! You'll see if you watch the video, there are a lot of them. Here, wait, let me do some ASMR. Tabs. Tabs. So, Although, I will say, a lot of people love tabbing out a book. I mean, you. this, you, is, this beautiful. is what you've done to me. Yeah, I love tabbing. Um, I'm not very clean tabber. I've seen other people on book. Not a clean stuff. tabber. That's what I was gonna say about. Oh, Natalie Jean, not a clean tabber. Well, I've seen women who are people who've done like perfectly aligned one millimeter out, and then they go directly to that. I don't really use books like that. I'm more of a like, and I throw them around yeah. and kiss them. I've seen her wrestle in books yeah, before, and I'm like, Natalie, you get don't need to tie it down. Yeah, you're not the the book hunter. <laughs> Not that you know of. Um, Crikey! So, if you can see this, the reds are Cassian and the grays are Nesta, and it is, they're, like, it's pretty even half out. Half and half, yeah. I haven't gone in so insane to count them out yet, but I probably will. But it's very even. So, if anything, I think Nesta has slightly more. It does look there might be a little bit more. Yeah. For Nesty. So, this book is broken into four parts and has a couple page prologue that describes Nesta's feelings as she was being forced into the cauldron that day in Highburn. It's like a version of that scene from the castle, but as experienced by Nesta. It turns out, wasn't fun. Oh, really? I'm so surprised. Yeah. They're both completely traumatized. You mean it wasn't like a carnival in there? What if they got in there and it was there was like, like a, a roller coaster? Like, like step like, right up, Whoa! step right up. Yeah, and then you get on the roller coaster and then you're scared, but it's thrilling. And then it's like when I tried VR for the first time where I almost puked because I remember when Holden put me on a roller coaster, my first VR experience. And I was just like sitting on the floor just being like, ah, ah. It was just too much. I think it was like that. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much so the like, same. I get her. Yeah, I get it. Um, I've done VR before. You guys saw in the 12-hour stream, um, I'm calm and collected when I do yeah, VR. Yeah, you were very very smoothly <laughs> doing that. Um, so not gripping onto my brother for my brother who we do not touch. I've never touched Henry more than I did in that instance. And I was like, Henry, save me! Because I was up on this, like... Pole. They were making me walk the plank up above in a building. Like, I was supposed to jump off the building. They wanted me to jump off of a building. Uh, on VR. Let's be Sorry. clear. Yeah, on VR. It was a VR, on VR. helmet. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, the boning. I was... You forget the boning in corsets. I haven't worn a corset in a minute, and this boning is just getting into my bones. That's how you get 
the the sensual shape of a woman. Yeah, I got the shape of um, a woman. So I put the wrong word. I was so I was going to say it's a beautiful alliteration on the brutalness and hugeness of what happened, but that's not the word. Correct word. Iteration. Oh, uh, the yeah, the way that she uses colorful language to describe. It's very poetic, yes. the way she describes Nessa going inside of the cauldron and what happened in there. She describes how she fought back inside of its grip and ripped pieces away, clawing and tearing at darkness. Wrapped in black eternity, Nesta and the cauldron twined, burning through the darkness like a newborn star. Okay. Oh, that's so beautiful. It is. So the first part of this book is called Novice. Chapter one begins from a Cassian POV. And I'm probably not going to note every single POV change because that would be maddening. Yes, because it really bops. Um, but I'll probably mention it when, some, when it ma- matters. So when, we're, when we open this chapter, we're greeted with Cassian and, and he's at Nesta's front door, hesitating to knock on oh. it. Oh. We learn pretty quickly that there has been a jump in time since the court of Frost and Starlight. About six months have gone by. Nessa's not doing better. In fact, probably worse than she was during the solstice get-together situation. Uh, Cassian observes how decrepit her apartment building is as he delays the inevitable of having to face her. He doesn't understand why she wouldn't take up a nicer place or go move in with Feyre, who has offered her a space in their new river estate that sounds amazing. Unbelievable, especially this time. Like, you've had apartments like these before like I remember reading this one part or of the two book right uh, a couple and I remember one of my really bad downtimes of like a real low for me I was living in this apartment with this the landlord lived below me and she and her horrific husband had like a hundred cats so the whole place reeked of cat urine and she was always trying and she like was always pilled out of her brain and she would sit on the staircase waiting for me to come home and I'd come in hammer and she'd be like I found this cat I found this cat I can't take another one will you take this cat and I'd be like uh, I can't take like I can't take care of anything right now. I can barely take care of myself. And she was always trying to give me cats, and she then she trying to give you cats? cats. And then that's how I got my one-eyed cat Pipsqueak because th- she found him with her eyeball falling out. But she was this feral cat that didn't want to be on the inside of a building, so I adopted her. And she just like I've got scars all over my stomach because she used to attack me in the night. <laughs> she used to hide. She could open up the drawers. I know nothing of this story. Hide inside of my drawers. Never and then this. I would go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and she would like swipe at my stomach. And I would just, I have like scars all over my stomach from where she would like gouge into me from this one specific drawer that she would get into. And you'd think I'd learn, but I was a horrific, horrific drunk and I was at a real low. So I was just so upset. And then I was scared to go home because I didn't want to deal with the cat. So I would just stay at the bar and I would go to other people's homes. And oh, I'd you're st- blaming the cat? It's because of the cat. So my low is because of the cat and not because of me having a rough time. Maybe Nesta had a cat situation, too, we don't know about. And that's really why she's in this situation. That's probably She's in a predicament. She's got a pips at home. Yeah. Um, wow. Didn't know any of that story before. Yeah. I didn't even know you had a cat. Oh, yeah. Old pips. Hated it. <laughs> Hated that cat. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> so we're in a very similar to that apartment building, but I don't know if she has a, a pillowed out landlord or not. Mm. Um, could possibly be the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so they're in this building. Ca- Cassian is outside of her door, just like, no, nah, uh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. The first glimpse we get of Cassian in this book reflects how we learned about him in the previous book. It's very much like he's... St- a gentle hearted, even though he's a warrior, he, you know, really cares about people and is a good person. He's our himbo. Or good male, I should say. And he's a himbo. Yes, he's a himbo. And he, even though she was so cruel and mean to him, he still expresses concern in his thoughts for Nesta in these moments. And he does have dark hair, right? In my brain, yeah. my problem is I, I see him as like a live action Hercules. So I always see him with like more of like a fair hair and that Azriel oh, is the dark one. But it's hard for me. I know, obviously, it that's not the case. And all the, I see all the fuck pictures that I may peruse every once in a while yeah. um, just for fun. 
professionally. Uh-huh. Um, and I, it like, it really is different in my brain because I see him as fair haired. It's interesting. I've never thought of him like that because I always immediately see um, Cal Drogo. Oh. You know, like oh. that's. Oh, bringing up Jason Momoa. Are no, you? no, no, you can't. <laughs> no. Nope. Can't do it. I can't do it. No, you can't. Um, so, yeah, but that's who I always saw. And also, they're always described because the Illyrians are often perceived as maybe from somewhere in like the Mediterranean or like in India <sighs> or that. You know, dark, like <gasps> darker skin, darker hair. I think that's how generally they're described. So I've never seen him as fair haired in my yeah. head. Yeah. I don't know. I can't divorce it. But well, now it's, that's all right. That's your imagination. Thank you. And oh, I've got quite an imagination. Oh, I know. <laughs> Pervert. <laughs> Finally, he he's standing at this door and he works up the nerve to knock. Silence. Cassian almost sighed his relief aloud. Thank the fucking mother. Clipped, precise footsteps sounded from the other side of the door, each more pissed off than the last. He tucked his wings in tight, squaring his shoulders as he braced his feet apart. A traditional fighting stance, beaten into him during his training years, now mere muscle memory. He didn't dare consider why the sound of those footsteps sent his body falling into it. Nesta Archer on appears. Clip, 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 clip. I just want to hear, like, in my head, a bit like how she stomped to sound like every step is more pissed off than the last. <laughs> or is she going like fucking that? I mm, I have my feelings, but I can't because it reveals parts of the story. So I think I know how she's. But we don't know. Stuff we can't yet. reveal. We don't know. Um. I, and this is making me mad that I'm just now thinking that I should have come in a man's shirt. Oh, yes. Not, I should have come. I whoa. <laughs> uh, whoa. It is the horny book, y'all. You getting ready? I should yeah. have co- I should have costumed myself uh, in costumed. a man's loose shirt. Yes, 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 yes. I'm pissed I didn't think of that until just now. <laughs> um, so because she shows up and she's wearing a man's shirt as to all of her clothes. Like, you know how you do oh, yeah, in the morning they. if you're going to the bathroom or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Although um, usually I, I would always be too scared because I wouldn't know if I could fit into the man's clothes. So usually I would stay away from their clothing. Cause, like, I don't need them to know. That I can't fit into their clothes. No. This is plus size I- issues sometimes. No. Well, Nesta doesn't seem to be like, she's not doing great. So I think she's mostly like bones right now. Yeah. So, well, especially when you wake up after a one night stand and you've been really drunk and you like don't remember their name and you kind of can't remember what happened and being woken up like that when you're going through the like, wait, what happened last night? Who is this person? How did I get here? I don't know what you're talking about. I know. I'm making it up. I've never been through that before. (laughs) Um, So she's opens the door in the shirt. She's also pissed that Cassian is at her front door. What do you want? Cassian thinks about the last time he saw her. Which was at a party on a pleasure barge don't again a month before. Pleasure barges. If I don't get my ass on a pleasure barge someday, I I'm want a to flip. so bad. I want. We got I wanna, to. I don't want to be too old to be on a pleasure barge. What do you mean? Like eighty? Yeah. Well, I mean, I would be. I or maybe I do. Like like a swinging seniors pleasure barge. That sounds fun. That actually does sound fun. Yeah. I take back what I just said. Yeah. I think it would retract be fun it. at any age. Retract. I retract it. I retract it. But get me on a pleasure barge and not a cruise. I'm not talking about a carnival cruise here. No, I want a like a big flat barge that floats around. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So that's where they the last time he saw her and that she looks even worse than she did then, which was not great at the time. So yeah. she's gotten thinner and sicklier looking since. Cassian's startled, but he doesn't let it show on his face. Instead, opting to taunt her a bit. She's not into it. Nah, not the time, Cassian. He's mm. trying to root around like, how do I mm, How do I make a connection here? Yeah. He explains that her presence is requested at Reese and Farah's house. And after she gets sassy and asks, which one? We learn learn that she's requested at the new house. But Cassian won't explain further. God, every every description of this freaking house. Mm, I want to Airbnb it. Oh, my God. He recalls their limited interactions since Solstice. And we learn that the pleasure barge is where Amran and Nesta's friendship ended. But no one seems to know why or how. And he 
forces himself to maintain an air of casualness in this moment because they just sucks, don't know what to like though. talk about it and yeah it's sad because that was we already kind of knew a little bit about the fact that Amron and Nesta had a little special relationship and it seems in this moment we're learning that um, Cassian is telling us like that was the end of all of it. That's also when you know you're at like a real new low is when you're enabling people that are around you also abandon you that's usually when you're like you don't usually recognize it until later on. You're like, oh, I should have probably figured that out then, huh? When my last friend stopped being my friend. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, that's where Nesta's at right now. Um, so she's infuriated by Cassian not being more aggressive or doing He's He's just trying to be like, come on, Nesta, let's go. And she's getting very angry with him. Um which he knew would happen, so he continues to needle her because he's doing it on purpose. And even as he's maintaining a cold assertion, he is in his head thinking about her body and specifically her breasts. Whoa. He likes them. Yeah, he's into them. He's into them knockies. But he's not doing anything that's like in that way at her. He's just thinking about it. Yeah, it's just in his brain. But we know. But we know. We know what he thinks. He tells that's what, man, when you're that attracted to someone that someone could be screaming at you and you're just like, but look at them honkies. Yeah. But he, I know he was respectfully not staring at her honkies. No, he wasn't because he's our himbo. He's our himbo. He's our respectful himbo. He is. He tells her to clean herself up and kick the guy out she had just woken up to. Her brows rose a fraction of an inch. He gave her a crooked smile. You think I can't hear that male in your bedroom trying to quietly put on his clothes and sneak out that window? As if in answer, a muffled thud came from the bedroom. Nesta hissed. I just imagined her doing that, just like becoming like a big snake woman. It's like, why are you, why are you doing that, Nesta? Stop. <laughs> Every time she hisses, I think that. I'm just like, stop being a snake bitch right now. Why are you being a snake right now, Nesta? Just like, cool out. Cassian reiterates that he'll be returning to collect her in two hours, and as much venom as she gives him, he won't back down. However, he does note in his thoughts that he wouldn't lower his eyes when he did a sarcastic bow in front of her, that none of them had forgotten, that she seems to have gained some kind of extraordinary power that she refuses to speak about. So she, he doesn't want to keep, as a warrior, he doesn't want to keep his eyes lowered too long because that's when she could strike with her yes. snake snake. He knows it's clear that she could be quite dangerous under there, but I think he might like it. He might like it, yes. (laughs) So now we've flipped over to the first Nesta POV. And the first line is, Nesta Archeron didn't know the name of the male in her apartment. Yeah, Dude, girl. Been there, Bianch. Been there. I've, of course, I've never been in that situation because I have saved my precious gift for my sweet husband. Obviously, and you've saved it for your tenth wedding anniversary, so you don't even know really the the sweetest juices of life yet. Yeah, this these books are actually really confusing to me. I bet you're like, what is this hole for? Yeah. Why do I put that nest one? Yeah. It's been it's been kind of helpful. It's like I learned. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I've also never been there. Ever, because I saved my sweet Ooh, back in the my... OK Cupid days. I was telling someone the other day that I was like, I was like, yeah, I, I I was on the apps for a while too, but I remember OK Cupid when I didn't have email on my phone yet. So in between, I was nannying, and I would run to the public library to check my email <laughs> to see if anyone had hit me back to see if I had a date that night so I could go out and bang some nameless, faceless person. And that's how I did it on OK Cupid, like. Like the olds did it at the public library. Like respectable, like. Yeah. And I would just be in the beautiful New York public library just being like, yeah, where am I going tonight to get my holes filled? At least you weren't doing it in the library. No. You weren't like meeting the men there. No, I dreamed of it, but I never actually did it. Yeah, I mean... But it's a sad. Again, it's I don't a sad know. time. I, I, it must have been really hard for you. I don't know anything about that because I kept my... Thick, yep. my yep. thick, I'm letting it uh, fly. Th- th- fleshy hymen. <laughs> oh, I can't talk about shrimp in my teeth, but you can talk about your fleshy hymen. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, save it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. Let it, let it, let it. Oh man, it's let sitting it just there really just like a there. rug. <laughs> Waiting to be covered in his dirt. Ew. 
Okay. <laughs> she, <laughs> she reflects on how she met this guy at a tavern, and they gave each other eyes until they had a, quote, wet, hot meeting of their mouths. All right. Yucked out or turned on by the phrase? Kind of turned on. Wet, hot meeting of their mouths? Yeah. Okay. Why? No? I think that, like, my first reaction is, like, oh, just say you kissed. But I I think in, like, a separate context, I do like saying meeting of the mouths instead, especially not to bring over Ice Planet Barbarians, but when they have to teach them what the human practice of kissing is. I don't want to hear about them. Ice Planet Barbarians is great. I don't want to hear about right. it. They're not a part of this world. No, They're I big will. And blue. I will eventually read read that. Mm. Um, I think also it's a way for Mass to get across that it's not a romantic kissing. No, that it is a very transactional sort of um, just happens. I need this right now. Get over here, like that kind. Man, oh, I'm just like having flashbacks of how many times of just like, which one are you? I remember walking up to a bar once, and I walked up to like I had left him to go to the bathroom, and I came back to the bar and walked up to a different person and like put my hand on their oh, shoulder, no. and he just like didn't know no realize me, and then the guy down the bar was like, hey, and was like, oh. <laughs> Sunny, just a lady, being a lady. You really were being a Nesta. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Love that. Five times. Um, so that's what they did. And they and then she drags him back to her batch pad. As she returns to her bedroom, she looks at him and thinks about how he is attractive, but just a boy, really, compared to the man who was just at her door. Good lord. Yeah, dude. She doesn't talk, she's not talking about age there. Nah, he's a full hunk of man. And this man, Except child. He's not. Whole, whole, full hunk of fae. Please, Jackie. Full, full, whole funka. Full funka fae. Full funka. Full funka. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the man, child, she's with is clearly terrified that this war hero, Cassian, just showed up at a female's apartment he'd just bedded. And as he's scrambling to gather his clothing, she rips his shirt off of her body and says goodbye to him while she's fully nude as she walks to her creaky, rusty bathroom. Such a fucking it's a pus- so move, baller. man. That's a diva move right there. Just ripping his shirt off, throwing it at him, then nude, walking past him to get out. Goodbye. Bye. As she starts the bathwater, she thinks about how this meeting that she, she's been called to is likely due to the huge bill she has run up at the tavern and feels a sense of smugness, I think, that she has pissed fair off enough that she's calling her in. She certainly doesn't care or feel shame about it. As we recall from Akafas, Akafas. she's deeply removed from her emotions at this point. Even though she knows her actions are shameful, she can't feel the shame. Oof. But she Oh man, it's gonna come screaming back. It always though. does. Oh, it always does. Do you feel that you had a Nesta when I lived with you and Henry for a year? No, you were never mean. But I was um You were just I would quietly cry single. and drinking. You were new you were up uphe- you were in an upheaval part of your life, which is okay. You were never mean or anything. Henry said he'd always heard the <laughs> as I would like take a wine bottle from your stack and just like hide in the bedroom. I will say, and I mean this in a positive way, you Ooh. are a very openly emotive person. So I I don't want to say I wasn't concerned when I saw you cry because mm. I think that you just express a lot through emotions. So I we weren't worried. That's like great. We, were, we were like, she's going to figure it out. She's going to get through this. Well, yeah. you know that like I was at least being safe under your home. Yeah, of course. And I was just talking to my therapist this morning that I was like, is there a way to put Botox into my tear ducts so I don't cry anymore? I don't and, know if um, that's good. She said it probably wouldn't be good for me. No, I don't think that's a good. I think you're supposed to be able to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wouldn't that be great? And then I would just like start crying and go, oh, and just, oh, just circle oh. around your eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> I, she's like, I think it would come out somewhere. And I was just like, oh my God. Just start spewing out of my mouth. Ah! <laughs> that's, a, like, that's a Liz Lemon 30 Rock. Yeah. <laughs> it, it literally is. Um, so um, she is in that place where she's just like, I can't feel very much. But she does know that even if people judge her and question why she would move into a dump, she is grateful not to have the eyes of anyone on her here. It's a true hiding place where no servants or family members will be flitting around her. 
She gets into her bath and thinks back on how she had to force herself to sit in freezing cold baths for hours, sick and shaking, to get past her fear of them Damn. due to the cauldron. She mentions that in Aquar, actually, a time when she had just slightly begun opening up to Feyre and had admitted to her that she couldn't get in a bath anymore. Feyre had told her they'd find another way for her to bathe, and Nesta felt seemed relieved. Th- there was a moment in time where Nesta could have cracked her shell, but then her father's death had reinforced those walls around her and added barbed wire around them. Yeah, dude. So she fully retreated. That she couldn't save her father with that deep well of power inside her seems to have made her want to close it up even further. Which is crazy because it's like you haven't even tapped into it yet, girl. Like you can't even be like, I've got all this power and I couldn't even save my father. But it's like you hadn't been working on it. You can't like just use a power you don't know how to wield yet. You know, but there's you you understand feeling extreme guilt oh, for, yes. for things that maybe were out of your control. Yes. Like she doesn't know how to express any of those things because she as we'll learn a lot more about her as we uh you know go through our childhoods and like go through therapy and she's (gasps) she's doing in her head um they don't have therapists there unfortunately but uh, we learn more about like how she was raised and and why she may be like this a little bit and i think you know she she also feels the guilt of she still held resentment in her heart for him as she watched him die because she wasn't anticipating it. So right. she had all these emotions for him, but also immediately if somebody just like suddenly dies, there's, you know, that idea of like she just wants to bury that inside and cover it with the drink. Well, and she also like probably never got to apologize and connect with her father because right. like, you know they had such a tumultuous relationship and she had so much hatred towards him. Like, she didn't get the opportunity to be like, hey, thanks for saving us with those ships and like I forgive you. Like so right. the guilt of that yes. is just like adding on to it too. And I think that's a pretty common trauma. Not a sorcerer breaking your father's neck in front of oh, you. Oh, because but we've all been there. That's not as common. But not getting closure on something you've never totally you might never be able to resolve mm-hmm. fully. Um she then describes in her thoughts what she is essentially – she's essentially having panic attacks yeah. and using drinking and noise and sex to push it away and couldn't be me for all of my 20s. No, 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 um, no, no. She cleans herself off from the night before and reflects on how the sex with that male was all right. Not great, but not the worst of the men she's tread on for says. Even immortality wasn't enough time for some males to master the art of the bedroom. So she would taught herself what she liked. She'd obtained a monthly contraceptive tea from her local apothecary, and then she'd brought that first male here. He had no idea that her maiden head had been intact until he spied the smeared blood on the sheets. So, you know, we she's Yikes. not she's she's experimenting. She's trying things for herself. But where's my contraception tea? Yeah, right. I wish that I had that in the twenties rather than just rolling the dice and being like, hope for the best. And everyone being like, you're using condoms, right? And going, yeah. <laughs> but you always should. You should always be using condoms. <laughs> yes. If you're doing if you're out, if you're experimenting, um, please use protection. Use and don't just roll the dice. No. And um, so she's got the contraceptive tea. But also, like, what I love including in this is that she's learning what she likes for herself. Yes. Which is a very important thing for all people to realize that, like, sex is with, is different with every person. And, like, you have to figure out what you like and what makes you tick. With consenting parties in that way where she's, like, going to a place where she's not trying to find a boyfriend. Right. She's she's going and being like, want to do it. And they're like, all right, let's go. Wet, hot meeting of the mouth. Wet, hot meetings of mouths. Um, I, now I'm just thinking of the mouth shaking hands. <laughs> shaking lips. <laughs> like that's what they do. Oh, that's just a fey thing. <laughs> a sex bargain. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Nesta thinks about how Reese and how any attempts at civility he's made with her were only for his precious mate's sake. She doesn't want any of Reese's pity and she feels certain that he hates her. But she also doesn't really care. Then... As she's getting out of the tub and getting dressed, Cassian's back at the front door with a loud knock as she is finishing herself up in the same dress as the last night, actually. Mm. She pulled it off the ground. I imagine it's a pretty disheveled Luke she's Man, going for I here. I bet she reeks of, like, 
cigarettes and, you know, whatever they have in the Fey world. Pipes. That is, yeah, I guess it's probably pipes. They must have backy of some sort. Doing one of these. Yeah. Tiny puffs. Yeah. Um, I don't think you have to worry about dip in the mouth, hopefully. <laughs> um, so she's getting herself together and he knocks. She opens the door to crack and walks away, basically just like not greeting him again. He strode in after her, a mug of tea in his hand, the cup probably borrowed from the shop at the corner, or outright given to him, considering how people tended to worship the ground his muddy boots walked on. So she says it with a bit of contempt, but Mm -hmm. also uh, admits to herself that she, she basically allows herself just a moment of reminiscing at the sight of watching him in battle. And you can tell, even though she won't admit it fully, that it like... Did stuff to her. Yeah, dude. And it sends her mind to the moment she saved him from the cauldron's immense power. But she shuts the thought down at the memory of a thousand people she couldn't save at that same moment. That might give you a little drama. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess it doesn't um, make you feel so great about yourself. That she, in that moment, screamed out his name and he somehow heard her across the battlefield and abandoned his legions at her cry and avoided being swept away in the explosion of light. Oh, I just want to die of the romance! Oh, die of romance. Die of romance that she screamed for him on the battle- battlefield and he came! He heard well, her. <laughs> I don't know if he me. He may have been pretty hard, but I don't Ugh. think he came. I hope, I hope he didn't cross those wires. No, that's got to be difficult. Mm-hmm. Every time he gets into his fighting stance, he gets he's hard. That's, a, that's rough. Um, I'll watch it. Oh, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Cassian does his best to remain casual and pokes at her with light jabs. He actually calls her out about the number of males he smells in the apartment, but he doesn't say it in a like a slut shamey judgmental way per se. It's but almost in a bit of I would say like light jealousy. Yeah, I think it's also like in a lighthearted way. But I think also what I like about their interactions that it comes off in a way of like Cassian's also had many oh, yeah. a night like this. So I think that's, that's why like he's more seeing it of a way of like, man. Yeah. I see what you're doing I there, buddy. I see what you're doing here. I've been here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been there. I almost like understand how you're feeling and you could even talk to me or oh something. Oh, my God. To talk about her uh, 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 emotions? No. Absolutely not. Not there yet. She's not, it's really hard, man, watching a friend go through that, too, when you're just like, you could talk to me, but they're just not ready to talk about it yet. No. So you're just like, well, I'm just going to, like, be around you like you're the egg and I'm a carton and I'm just going to kind of just make sure you don't break. Oh, you're a carton in that cell. Like I'm that. the carton. Hey, give me your eggs. Give me your eggs, mom. But what happens when the carton, carton, <laughs> what happens when? When what the, happens when the, the covering for the egg needs covered up? You cry yourself to sleep at night. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so the carton just lays alone in yeah. the dark crying? Yeah, in the dark crying. Out of their mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just like opens up like it's um like the hamburglar's yeah. mouth. That's what I see with two big eyeballs on the top. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like kind of horrific. Yeah. About it. Well, the Hamburglar is scary. Yeah, he's scary. I don't want to kiss on the Hamburglar. You. And I've heard many of pre- people that want to kiss on the Hamburglar. You, why? And I'm a monster fucker, so, you know, no, no judge. It's, I just feel like he'd swallow my head. Yeah, he looks like a Muppet. Mouth's too big. Although I think you probably, do you have a Muppet? Is there a Muppet? Dr. Teeth. Dr. Teeth, right. right, right, right. <laughs> why, is there a Muppet for you? I don't. <sighs> nah. Nah. Beaker doesn't do it for you? Me, 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 me. I shouldn't do it in front of you. I'll, I'll get you slipping out of the seat. <laughs> get out of here. Beaker lover, beaker lover. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Uh, no, Dr. Teeth always got me. I feel like I would have sex with all of Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely the sexiest of Muppets, but they also come across as very much adult. I was such a Muppet baby stan that uh, I think of them as you kids. See them as babies. Okay. Yeah, I, I was obsessed that. with that cartoon. So she, you know, he's making these like jabs at her 
And Nessa's beyond shame, though, So, as we recall. So she just tells him the males never seem to mind the other scents in there. <laughs> and, like, does it smell like a footlocker in there? What do you Man, think? Man, can you imagine what it smelled? I mean, I can't think about some of the places I've lived in and what they smelled like for people coming in. Especially because it was such a heavy cigarette smoker. So, like, I never we were, realized. You know, you weren't around other people who were, like, doing better. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. We were all in a cesspool. <laughs> yeah. Um... But I force going along the lines of like face scents, like when they get, become aroused, they're all food smells. Maybe it just smells like a grocery store in there, like a different aisles of groceries. Oh God! Um, it's in the processed meats aisle. Yeah, maybe. Yikes! Nesta goes to reach for her coat, and he tells her to take a scarf because it's cold. Aww. She ignores him, but he moves towards her and picks up the scarf from the little knob it's on. What's it called? Sh- not shelf. Scarf knob. Scarf, scarf knob. <laughs> the scarf knob that everybody has. Um, and it's a scarf she got from Elaine for her birthday, she recalls. And he hands it to her towards it, like basically gesturing for her to take it. It's not in gentleness, but in irritation. She wonders if it has something to do with the meeting, why he's so irritated this morning. And then suddenly dread pulls inside of her. Maybe this isn't about the bar tab, but something to do with the aftermath of the war. <gasps> We get a recollection set of memories through Nesta's mind that brings us up to speed, reminds us of what's been going on and with the human queens and how that croned up one blames Nesta for taking something from the cauldron and making it so mad that it gave the queen exactly what she asked for. Eternal life, but as an old yuck. Now you're old and yucky forever. Um, I, mean, I would I'd probably be, I'd be, be very pissed. upset. Yeah, I'd be pretty be pissed, pissed about that too. <laughs> but it's not Nessa's fault. She she was the one who shoved her way and was like, "Let me in. I want it." Yeah, and you were too greedy, and that's what you get, you greedy little nib. Have you never read a fable? Yes, Queen. So we cut to the pair, uh, Nesta and Cassian, arriving at the new place. And Nesta bitterly reflects on how they call it the River House, but it's actually more of an estate. <sighs> She feels a moment of embarrassment at the shoes she has on, which still have wine stains from the night before. I mean, I get the I with Murder Fist, our sketch comedy group. I was recollecting this over the weekend that I had no shoes that weren't covered in fake blood, and every day I wore shoes that were like smattered with fake blood, and I didn't think anything of it. I wouldn't have either. To be I just honest. had blood all over my stuff. I'm just like, don't you realize, like. Get yourself together. Don't wear those shoes during during a show. I'm going to say I'm not I don't even think I'm I'm past that. Like I would I, we just do so many theatrical things in our lives. I I just like, oh, there's prop stuff on my shoes. Well, well, that's my life. That's my life. <laughs> that's life. <laughs> oh god. Long week. Okay. So, um so then we get some delightful house porn oh here. Oh my god, the river house. The fey lights in each nest-shaped orb cast shimmering reflections on the polished pale wood floors, interrupted only by potted ferns, wood furniture also made in Valaris, and an outrageous array of art. She didn't bother to remark on any of it. Plush blue rugs broke up the pristine floors, a long runner flowing along the cavernous halls on either side, and one ran beneath the arch of the stairs, straight to a wall of windows on its other side, which looked out onto the sloping lawn and gleaming river at its feet. Mm. Imagine how pissy you'd be. You'd be like, oh, it's so nice in here. Mm. So good for you. <laughs> wow, congratulations on oh, your great. house. Oh, are you so happy with oh, each other? Oh, it's so nice Can here. I just say, I guess, like, magic carpenters, it's only been six months. This is, That's a lot to get done in six months to, like, build an estate. I don't know if you've ever worked with a contractor. You're like, uh, where'd he go? Uh, hey, buddy. Yeah, man, uh, they show up when they want to show up. I tell you what. What is it about contractors? <laughs> um, Uh-oh, Seinfeld. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, I think mm, there must be some sort of magics. Yeah. I don't know. I've never delved into the idea of the premise of, like, the logic of their house their making. world, yeah. I, I feel shame now that I haven't. You should. I'm glad. Thank I you. was hoping shame was going to come yeah, out of thank you. thank you. It's like, yeah, shame all real good. The opposite of feeling no shame is feeling shame for literally everything, which is another issue. What? No, we've never. What? 
<laughs> so Nesta, without much admiration, thinks on how they somehow managed to make this palace homey and warm. And she's, you know, sort of in a bitter way. She notes that many, many paintings are on the walls done by Feyre and that they all depict various tableaus of their friends and family. There were none of Nesta, naturally. She would never admit it, but I think she's super hurt that everyone but her and their father included gets a painting on the wall. So their dad has one and, well, everyone but Nesta and her mother. Uh, That's very why. interesting, too. So I always, I wonder if we're going to get more backstory on that dang mother. We've got to. There's no way. Like, I we've guess got so. so many spranks. I feel like we're going to get, like, the full story at some point. But also, I feel like Nesta in this, like, realm, if she had painted paintings of her and had them up, she'd be like, oh, pretending like I'm a part of the family, aren't you? Like, I feel like yeah. she was going to have issues whether she was there or whether she wasn't there. I agree. And I think that was, because Fair is not really portrayed as a vindictive person so I think it was more she didn't want to upset Nesta and assume yes because she's removed herself from everyone so she's like I don't think she wants to be here yeah and be a part of this be a part of this family that we've created and yeah so I don't know maybe we'll know about her mom but maybe we're just meant to believe that she simply wasn't a very nice lady or a great mother but we do there's plenty of mothers out there that are just not that nice not that there's like a huge trauma attached to it but it's like there's plenty of mothers that maybe didn't necessarily want to be parents yeah and just just like cold and distant yeah like yeah that kind of thing so well and we actually do learn some about her mother through the eyes of Nesta in this book um and probably we will with Elaine, too. And here she reflects on how Nesta was her mother's pet. So Nesta was the the mommy daughter. Elaine and Feyre were daddy's girls and not very cherished by their mother. She, they were kind of ignored. And Nesta was the mom's prize. So she was, like, sort of given a lot of her mom's maybe negative traits. Yikes. That irritation and hurt from being excluded from their walls gets her powers barking. And she has to pull on that internal leash. So we're getting this idea that she it is boiling up in her all the time and she has to fight and fight to like whatever this massive power is inside of her. She has to really work to keep it down. It's not like she's trying to find it or get it out. Right. Nesta describes a gorgeous sitting room that Cassian leads her into where we get our first glimpse of Feyre in this book. But now so far away, no mm, longer in her not little in her brain. brain anymore. We don't get that bond talk anymore. Mm-mm. It's kind of weird to experience this without being in her head at all. Yes. But yeah. Feyre perched on the rolled arm of the couch, clad in a heavy white sweater and dark leggings. Rees, in his usual black, leaned against the mantel, arms crossed. No wings today. And Amryn, in her preferred gray sat cross-legged in the leather armchair by the roaring hearth, those muted silver eyes sweeping over Nesta with distaste. What happened between them? Ugh. We'll find out, maybe. Uh, what happened? Here we hear a little more about what Cassian had mentioned about Nesta and Amron's falling out. They did, in fact, have a big argument on the pleasure barge. Oh, and fighting on the pleasure barge. Oh, on the pleasure Brown barge? city. Come yep. on. And we learned that before this, Nesta and Amron had been spending time together, doing puzzles, talking, and, of course, training her magic. But even though she had kept up with it after all those months from the battle, so even in, when she was separated from everybody at that solstice time, she was still working with Amron on her magic. Yeah. But after that big fight, she you know, wasn't getting any better mentally. And it seemed the fight she had with Amron was the breaking point, And she wanted nothing to do with these people or her magic anymore. Oh, yeah. That's really going to make it go away. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, walk away from it. Amron being Amron tells her that Nesta looks atrocious. <laughs> Nesta reminds us that Amron is no longer an alien, but just a plain old Hi, Faye. Ugh, some boring oh, hi, Faye. She's just going to live for Ugh. like 500 years. And can float things around. Ugh. But that her attitude was, even though she's no longer this powerful being who could have shattered the entire city with a few thoughts, she's just as biting in her attitude. So she still has no like fear in her. Amron chides her for beha- her behavior, saying they openly know that she's been drinking and fucking anything in sight. Oof. Nesta's taken aback. What? She's been brought here for this to be lectured. That's why she's here. Feyre, 
Mm. I just, I just like, even as you're saying Triggered. that, just <laughs> reminding myself of, yeah, they did that a couple of times. When yeah. you walk in, you're like, is this a fucking intervention? <laughs> you guys are giving me an intervention? <laughs> there are always mini one. You never had, like, you were never No, I just place. had one. I had one of my friends being like, hey, we really think you're hurting yourself. And just like, no! oh, yeah? Me? <laughs> no! I don't answer to nobody! Um... But it is now, in given perspective, it was very nice of them, even yeah. though, um, even when your friends are all in bad places, too, when you have one that's in a much worse place, when you can, like, pull together and be like, hey, you're really fucking up. Yeah. You gotta, like, pull, pull your shit together, bro. Yeah. So, that's what she kind of feels like is happening yeah. in this moment. She's like, oh, this is an ambush. Okay. Favorite is trying to be diplomatic, which I'm sure would be infuriating to a person who just got called out in front of the room like it's kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Nesta lashes out. She's not under their jurisdiction. She can do whatever she pleases. Yeah, but you're not paying for your life, bitch. When you ain't paying for your life in somebody else's, you kind of have to live by somebody else's rules, at least partly. Well, and I mean, then you have those weird, like social things too, though, because in the human realm, women didn't really work a lot. Like, it seems like. They were never going to have jobs, so Nessa's never worked. Right. So that's also a thing, like, in certain, like, social constructs, the women are supposed to be funded, and, like, so then there's, like, all those weird things in there, too. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know anything about that. I can't no, even I don't. that <laughs> world. No. Um, but, you know... Technically, she's not wrong, but also she's lashing out and being cruel because she doesn't want to. She's not. She doesn't know how to defend herself. Yeah. Boris has the power of the High Lord, and though he rarely uses that force, he sends out that dominance to her that gets Nesta to sit down and listen. Mm. She let out a low laugh. <laughs> You're not my High Lord. You don't give me orders. But she knew how powerful he was. Had seen it. Felt it still trembled to be near him. So Reese begins to battle with her when Feyre snaps at him to back off. Oh, sister wolf. Yep. He can let her take the lead or he can beat it. That's same to you, Amarin. So Feyre is really trying to... She, protect. She, yeah, she tries to protect Nesta all the time, even though Nesta obviously doesn't deserve it at all right now. And doesn't want and it. And doesn't want it. But she's still, like, telling them to stop being mean and cruel to Nesta. I know, like, everybody's angry. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Nesta didn't bother to look pleasant as Feyre twisted to face her, taking a proper seat on the couch, the velvet cushions sighing beneath her. <sighs> her sister swallowed. <laughs> We need to make some changes, Nesta. Feyre said hoarsely. You Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Get it. <laughs> you do, and we do. Nesta wonders in this moment where Elaine is, and then she's uh, okay, this is an intervention! Because mm -hmm. Elaine probably wouldn't be able to stand up to Nesta's anger in this right. moment. So I think that's why she's asking. Feyre tells her that she partially blames herself, Feyre, for not helping Nesta more up to this point. Wanting her to sort things out for herself. Feyre tells her that she kind of thinks it's her fault. That what is your fault? Nesta hissed. You, Cassian said. This bullshit behavior. Whoa. Nesta is incensed. They all begin talking to her like she's a huge angry baby. But they don't understand how she feels. They know nothing. Yes. Jon Snow. Yes. But Feyre says, sorry, it's time for some changes. Nesta responds, keep your self-righteous do-gooder nonsense out of my life. Ooh. And I, like, I get it. Yeah. There's little worse than when you hate yourself and a bunch of people are surrounding you going, hey, um... We noticed you hate yourself. That's Let's, like talk about this. It's really sad for you. Yeah, and it's like really hard for us to see it. That must be really hard on you. So I like, go, get away from me. Like, Ugh! Ugh! Get away! See, I think that rather than hissing in this situation, I'm more of a her. She barked. She barked. Like I'm a barker yeah. rather than a hisser. Mm. I think I'm what like a bird. What are you? I'm like maybe a bird. Oh yeah. Get away! Yeah. So you're like more of a car. You cawed. She cawed. Yeah. I mean, ah! very scary, too. Yeah. Birds, are, they can be scary. Yeah. 
She put a tattooed hand on her heart, like it meant something. I decided after the war to give you time, but it seems that was wrong. I was wrong. Nesta's like, oh yeah? Yeah. And then the hammer strikes down. As of that day, Nesta's life is over, as she knows it. No apartment, no more taverns, no more wet meetings of mouths. Not even a little? Or will there be? No apartment, you say? Well, where the hell is Nesta supposed to be going then? Feyre looked to Cassian. For once, Cassian wasn't grinning. You're coming with me, he said. To train. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an intervention. Yes. Will she be fixed? <laughs> so I know we said to read up until page 50. We um, These are maybe going to be slightly more mini episodes because Jackie's finishing out her page seven tour. Yes. And so we have to cram some episodes in. And I'm going to do my best since we're dating. We're like up to date and recording. I'm going to do my best to tell you what chapter to read to. But we may not get to that chapter. But I'll never go past where I'm saying. Yes. But you're I'm, not going to be spooled. No, spoilt. Um, So, yeah, we, uh, you know, continue to read to page 50 for the next episode episode and everything just wanted to give you a heads up and then we'll be back to regular schedule um but we're very you guys have been having a great page seven tour and happy you're doing it yes and i'm happy to be able to be a little drunk nesta over here and don't tell me what to do natalie you're but not I'm, in charge of me. But I'm drunk, Nesta. Don't tell me what to do. And neither one of us want to do anything. I don't, who tells us? No. Who will tell us what to do? No. Somebody help. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we'll be fine. <laughs>